Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. This is the 2024 version of the GMC Terrain. It's the AT4 trim level and it is all wheel drive. So if you're looking for a good vehicle that has nice interior features as far as an easy to use touch screen, all of really a lot of the latest features from GMC, very nice materials that are going to hold up a comfortable ride quality and a reasonable amount of cargo capacity, as well as the ability to get around in snow and ice, because obviously all wheel drive makes a difference with that. This is definitely a model you should consider. Its exterior color is Summit White. It has a jet black interior. And in today's video, we're gonna give you the information to answer the question, do the features match the price? And taking a look from the front end, you're going to find the unique to the AT4 trim level here for the terrain front grill. You can see that you have LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. All of the lighting on the vehicle is going to be LED. A very nice look, still pretty modern. We're waiting to see what's going to happen in the future with the terrain as far as when a full redesign comes, but I think we'll see that with other models that GMC has redesigned for the 2024 model year. We'll see what comes for 2025. Like I mentioned earlier, in fact, let's move over to this side just to make it easier to see everything because we have more light over here. All wheel drive. So what do we have as far as tire and wheel size goes? We're gonna have 225 on the width, a 65 series sidewall wrapped around those gloss black 17 inch wheels. And the gloss black will continue its way on up to the mirror caps these are manually folding power adjustable side view mirrors. The turn signal indicators are built in. And as you would expect, you'll find the AT4 logo in a number of places on and around the vehicle. And here is the remote for the 2024 model year. No changes, obviously, but one thing that's good with no changes, that means you still have remote start. You can also open the hands-free lift gate back there. And when you have the remote on your person, the good thing is, is you have passive entry. You can walk up and just push the buttons here to lock or unlock the interior, not only on the front doors, but on these rear, also body colored door handles. So for parents out there, you're probably going to come to the back doors first. That's a good thing because you can open or unlock all four doors from that area. And really a nice look as far as the overall design with the lines of the vehicle with the way everything works its way up right here and just kind of flows its way back. Just gives it a nice, unique look. It will come with the roof rails. Again, gloss black, not a bad thing necessarily. And from this angle, you can see that it does have a panoramic sunroof, the shark fin antenna, and finishing things here on the end of the roof in this area with the rear roof spoiler that will channel air over the rear window. When you're driving down the road, that's one way you help keep that clean. Obviously, the rear window wiper helps with that as well. And we finish things off with the LED taillights back here. A nice look, as well as a very clean looking rear. You don't have exhaust tips out here. Not that it's a bad thing to have that, but if you don't like those exhaust tips coming out from under the bumper, well, it has a clean look back here where that's concerned. Obviously, the AT4 logo and terrain logo there as well. Now, what is it like to drive this model? Well, we'll find out more on the test drive, but what motivates this model? To get down the road? Let's open the hood and find out. And it's real simple to choose the engine that's under the hood of your terrain because as of right now, there's only one engine option available. But I think it will get the job done. It's the 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 175 horsepower. The torque numbers come in at 203. It's mated to a nine speed automatic transmission, so no CVT, that's always a good thing. And MPGs, 23 city, 28 highway, 25 combined, and potentially four gallons of gas used per every 100 miles driven. You can tow up to 1,500 pounds with your terrain. And one thing that I want to show you here, here is the power lift gate or power tailgate. You can call it whichever, but one way or another, let's say you come back here or you use the remote to open it and nothing happens. Let me show you what the most likely issue is going to be. You don't need to run into service real quick or anything like that. You're going to come right here to this button. 
see how it says max right there? Three-fourths, or it can be set to off. If it's set to off, you need to change it to three-fourths or max. That's going to be the most likely reason why it won't open. And 29.6 up to 63.3 worth of cubic feet as far as your cargo capacity goes. And you do have the protective covering right here as far as the floor goes. So you do have carpet underneath there, but depending on what you're hauling back here, you can leave this in or take it out. And two really good things about the terrain is number one, you don't have a CVT, a continuously variable transmission. And number two is the fact that if I can get it up, you also have a spare tire, no tire repair kits here. So those are some pluses right there. And to maximize cargo capacity, you have the two releases right here. Here is the other. I'll let those seats down so you can see how everything looks maximized. In fact, questions that I know some of you regularly ask, trying to answer those. Number one, you like to see the maximum cargo capacity shown. And what is the angle on the seat backs right here when you lower these all the way down? So you can see not completely flat, but at the same time, they lay flat enough to give you plenty of room for space as far as what you can haul back here. And you can kind of cheat a little bit more by, well, depends on where the front seats are set as far as their positioning goes. So a couple of different options there as far as your cargo space goes. You do have a little bit of space behind the fender wells right here in this area for additional items as well as a 12 volt power outlet if you need to use something like that. And as far as your rear seat passengers go, they'll find nice comfortable armrests here on the door. The contrast stitching that sets things off, it really kind of breaks up that jet black interior. Nice materials throughout as far as being sturdy and durable and they look nice. They're going to hold up. Also, the upper and the lower door bins are going to help the rear seat passengers quite a bit. They also have the option of using rear seat storage pockets right there. They can also use the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. And there is the panoramic sunroof. The view from the inside, there is a power shade that can be drawn forward if so desired. In some situations that could be very helpful. And a lot of space back here, that's for sure. Plenty of room, leg room, head room, everything. Air conditioning vents to help keep everybody comfortable back here as well as connectivity options. You can see what all is here. A couple of different options where that is concerned. And taking a look in through the passenger side door into the front seat, a similar look, just a little bit larger door than what we had with the rear doors. Comfortable armrests, more of that contrast stitching and the upper and the lower door bends. Power seats for the driver and the passenger along with the AT4 logo stitched into the headrests here in the front. A little bit of space right here as far as storage space goes. Also, some additional storage space right here. Maybe a phone could fit in there. I don't know. A lot of different potentials there depending on size. And a reasonably sized glove box is there too. And you'll find the USB and 12 volt options right here as far as connectivity goes. A couple of cup holders. And everything here, including your drive mode selector, you can turn off the auto stop start feature and the heated seat function. Heated only, it looks like. Ventilated would be helpful, although it's about to finally cool down here in northwest Louisiana. And you do have some space right here with the center console, some in front, some inside. And something else that I know is often asked is about the height of the center console. Here, it really seems to be in a pretty good place. The seats could be changed as far as their positioning goes to take more advantage of that as an armrest. Again, more of that nice contrast stitching right there, that orange color. And because I told you about it, I drew the shade forward, brought the shade forward for the panoramic sunroof just so that you could see what that looks like. All of that is controlled right here. This is where you're going to control the shade and this is where you're going to control the sunroof itself. It does tilt and slide open. And for those who may want to have a closer look at some of the options that are available here with the upper console, here's a good time for you to take a look. You may have seen it earlier, but I just wanted to make sure that I did show you that. As far as what's there, there is your sunglass holder. 
get that to close. And then obviously the vanity mirror is here with the mirror or the mirror and the lights built in. I'm not having the best hair day of my life, as you can see. And let's see here. Well, depending on where you sit, will determine on whether or not this visor is going to be helpful. And when the driver wants to exercise 175 horsepower, here's an old crap handle in case you need to dry, grab one. And it may not be that it's just a lot of horsepower. Whoever's driving just might not be a very good driver. And we'll move on here to the driver's side door panel. Obviously, you're going to have the expected additions of controls for the power side view mirrors and windows and all that good stuff. You'll also find two settings for seat memory, as you can see right there. And we'll move into the interior a little further. Here's the control for your headlights. You can drop the lever right here to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And while this may not be the latest, as far as the overall design and technology goes from GMC, we're going to see that at some point in the future for sure here. Let's turn that down a little bit just so that we don't blow you away with the sound of the fan running. But here's what you have. One thing I will say here, if you're that person stepping out of an older vehicle and saying, man, I don't have a choice. I have to step into a new vehicle now. I'm scared of all the technology. Here is very easy to learn and use technology, so don't let that scare you off. Easy to deal with. Here's your control for, obviously, your blinkers and all that good stuff is here. I think you, some of you know what that is and some of you don't. I drive around you, so I know. I promise. I see who uses their blinkers and who doesn't. I also see that all of you, when it rains, typically do use this lever. You should do that with your blinkers as well, but use the lever right there to control the front and rear window wipers. Yes, it's okay to laugh about it. Even if, well, you're that person I'm talking about, it's okay. I'm still glad you're watching. Here are the steering wheel mounted controls and everything again, easy to use. There is that GMC logo. Here's your horn button right there. We won't honk the horn, but, and like I said, a very easy to use or learn if it is the first time touchscreen. You have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so you can pair your phone here. Everything pretty simple to deal with and use. And then when you go into reverse, you do only have one camera view in this particular case. But just to show you what all is here, physical buttons for controlling the radio. And I know a lot of people like that because there are more and more vehicles going to buttons and controls really not buttons, but you control everything from the infotainment screen. Not here. You can see what's there as far as controlling the volume and the stations. All that stuff is here as well. So you can see that. And one good thing is that you do have a physical button to go back home right there if you want to. That's easy to deal with. Pretty simple. You can control the volume here and the station, all of that. And we're going to have dual zone climate control here. As far as the controls themselves go, you can see what all is here. Very easy to deal with. You can sync those together or unsync those. Now, the one thing I really want your feedback on, here is the push button shifter. So you're going to pull it. It's really a combination of push and pull. But you pull to go into reverse. You push to go into neutral. And you pull to go into drive. You also push to go into park. What do you think about that? Would you rather see something different in the future on the terrain? And as we looked at earlier, here are your driving modes. Let's go through what those are. See if we can get those to come up on the screen. There's off-road mode for you. We'll get that up. And then we're going to have all-wheel drive mode. That's great for driving in the snow if you need to do that. And then two-wheel drive mode is on and let's see anything else that's all we have as far as that goes but like i said a very simple system to use and learn here as far as everything goes here's how you're going to control the heated seats this is going to allow you to determine the level of heat but even though it's a lot better today than it has been for a while here in northwest louisiana it's still pretty warm i'm not turning those on all right, we're going to get out on the road for our test drive, and I'll tell you what, you might think that 175 horsepower is a little bit underpowered, but just driving down the road, not really trying to go real fast or anything like that, there's no real problems getting up to speed, that's for sure. I'm having no trouble getting up to where I need to be, but I'm also not flooring it, easing it in, easing into the pedal, 
seems to work well with these turbocharged engines and so I don't have any issues there. You also have a pretty good ride quality here. It's not a Cadillac, but it's also not a tank. So, and it's closer to the Cadillac than it is to the tank, by the way. And obviously, good handling. It does have the smooth ride quality, so you are going to pay a little bit in the respect of maybe not having as good a handling as you would in other vehicles, but sometimes that's what happens but overall a very enjoyable vehicle to drive and it has a lot of great safety features you know, like we talked about earlier you do have blind spot monitoring built into the side view mirrors and speaking of driving let's see how we can do on our turning radius right here there we go no problems whatsoever i had room to spare so pretty easy to deal with transmission seems to work well it doesn't isn't real choppy or jerky or anything like that seems to shift rather smoothly and the seats themselves are nice and comfortable i would like to see ventilated seats even though we're finally getting to a point where it's not as big of an issue here in northwest louisiana but we're still in the 90s right now just a few days left and that's going to be gone at least for a few months maybe we'll see but maybe i will be using the heated steering wheel and features and functions like that that are available here being glad it has heated steering wheel and heated seats and all that easy to see out of a really enjoyable vehicle to drive overall no matter the situation so depending on what you're looking for the price point is good the technology is easy to use and to learn that's one thing that i think is a big benefit here with the current generation of the terrain while it seems that I haven't seen any GMC vehicle that has technology in it that's hard to learn or use. This particular infotainment system, it gets the job done. It has a lot of great features. Obviously, you can pair your smartphone and using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto gives you the ability to basically have the screen mirror your phone. But the thing I like here is how easy it is to learn this technology. So. If you're that person who's maybe coming into this kind of a vehicle for the first time, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is a great place to start where the learning curve most certainly won't be terribly steep. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. Based on the fact that the sticker price on this model is $38,735, do the features match the price? If you stuck around to this point in the video, good on you because, well, you got the price. So tell me what you think. Do you plan to buy a Terrain for the 2024 model year, or are you going to maybe wait until 2025 and see what comes then? The price will likely be higher at that point. We'll just have to wait and see what happens if we get a full redesign by the 2025 model year. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Morgan Buick GMC for loaning me this Terrain for the day, and a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel just yet, please consider doing so. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.